Alright guys, welcome back to Underground Science, and in this video, we'll be going over um, just a basic overview of pyrogens and um, how it can um, cause a fever, alright? So let's go and get started. So, um, some pyrogens, or a really important pyrogen, right, is, or actually before we can say that, let's, let's actually just define, just have a basic definition, sorry about that, basic definition of a pyrogen. So what's a pyrogen? Well, a pyrogen is a chemical compound, right? It's a chemical compound that is a chemical compound that can be released can be released by a bacteria or not a bacteria, but by bacteria, right? More than one by bacteria and even certain types of white blood cells like macrophage, like we'll see in this example. All right, and the, the, the certain chemical compound, the pyrogen, can lead to fever, all right, and increased body temperature. And we'll see um, how, all right? So remember how we talked about in a previous video about how macrophages interact with helper T cells by releasing interleukin-1 when the CD4 glycoproteins on the helper T cell, right? So let's go ahead and um, try to label these again. So just to refresh our memory, so this is our helper T cell here. All right, and our helper T cell, right, remember, has a CD4 glycoprotein on it. So actually another name for our, our another name for a helper T cell is a CD4 positive cell, right? A CD4 positive white blood cell. And so we have a CD4 glycoprotein that attaches to the MHC2 complex of this macrophage. So let's say this is a macrophage here, or you can even be a dendritic cell, macrophage, all right? And so once it attaches on the MHC2 complex, we have our T cell receptor that we should also go ahead and label. So right here is our T cell receptor, all right? And our T cell receptor is really important. We'll talk about alpha, beta, and gamma, delta um, T cell receptors in a future video. But our T cell receptor will then bind to only a specific complement antigen. If it finds a specific complement antigen, like in this case, then it's going to bind to it. In turn, we'll have a CD4 glycoprotein bind to the MHC2 of the macrophage, right? Then what's going to happen is that once the binding process is complete, we're going to have interleukin 1 released. And we said that from the macrophage, right, interleukin-1 is an example of a pyrogen, all right? So interleukin-1 is an example of a pyrogen. So let's go ahead and keep that in mind, all right? Interleukin-1 is going to be released from the macrophage. We said it can do um, two important things, like activate the inactive helper T cell. So previously it's inactive, but once it comes in contact with this interleukin-1 and the binding process, the helper T cell becomes active, right? And then another thing interleukin-1 can do is it, it can attract more white blood cells to the macrophage, so it can take care of the pathogen, all right? So we can deal with the pathogen, pathogen in a better manner, all right? And so what happens is that if we have, let's say we have a bunch of these um, orange pathogens, right? We have a bunch of these floating around, or let's say if it's in our tissues or something, right? And we're trying to fight it off in the lymph node or whatever, right? And um, we have a bunch of these pathogens, and our macrophages are trying their best to break it apart, present it. Our T helper T cells are releasing inflammatory markers, right? Um, where our macrophages are releasing interleukin 1. So, what can happen is if there's a lot, right? If there's a lot of this pathogen, so the pathogen starts building up, right? Then, what can happen is we can have a defense, kind of like a defense mechanism of our body to help our immune system. And that defense mechanism is this many interleukin-1 molecules act as pyrogens that can actually go to the hypothalamus. So these pyrogens, this interleukin-1 and other um, pyrogens can go to the hypothalamus of the brain, can go to the hypothalamus. Remember, the hypothalamus is a subcortical structure, right? Gray matter, subcortical structure. Pyrogens can then go, so we'll have pyrogens traveling here like interleukin-1, 
can go to the hypothalamus of our brain and our hypothalamus can sense the increased amount of pyrogens and actually can set the response of fever leading to, let's say, increased body temperature, right? So it can, this can lead to increased body temperature, which can then help the immune system fight off the whatever pathogen is trying to fight off, and the pathogen will have um, more trouble trying to um, survive in a higher body temperature. That's a way that our pyrogens, like interleukin-1, can help us, all right? If there's a lot of pathogens, we'll be releasing a lot of interleukin-1, and this a lot there's um, a greater amounts of interleukin-1 can act as pyrogens and go to the hypothalamus, induce a fever response, which can increase the body temperature, which in turn can make it harder. So increased body temperature, we know, can make it harder, can make it harder for the uh, pathogens, right, or the virus or bacteria, whatever it is, to survive, right? So it can make the pathogens um, harder to survive. All right, and we're talking about the uh, whatever pathogen is causing the havoc, all right? So the pathogen can have a much harder time trying to survive in an increased body temperature because of the increased amount of pyrogens going to the hypothalamus that induces a fever response. All right, so that's all I wanted to get through in this video, right? The correlation between pyrogens and fever. I hope this video made sense to you guys. I hope to see you guys in my future videos. Um, where I'll talk about more cool topics about bio, biochem, physics, and chem. Um, I hope to, um, or uh, I hope you guys hit that notification bell and um, subscribe and like. See you guys later, and stay safe.